Today, I'm going to help you to understand how to prove the limit as x approaching infinity of this thing is equal to 2 thirds. Yes, we are talking about proving a limit rigorously, but this time we will actually be using the epsilon n definition because we have x is approaching infinity. So let me just give you guys a quick review. Whenever we are proving limits, in fact, we pretty much have these four versions. If x is approaching some number a and we have some function f of x, Suppose this is equal to some finite number L. Well, in this case, we'll be using the classic epsilon delta definition. And we have done a lot of examples on this already. So you guys can go check them out. Here, if x is approaching a finite number A, we'll be using delta. If the limit is finite, we'll be using epsilon. You can just think about them as like notations for now. For our case here, we have the limit as x approaching infinity of some function f of x. And this is, you know, 2 thirds is finite, so let's write it down as L. So if we have a finite limit, we will be using epsilon. But if x is approaching infinity, we will be using capital N. So again, just think about this as notation. I'm going to explain this in detail uh, in a minute. And then the other two version is that if we have limit as x approaching some number a of some function. Well, if the limit is equal to infinity, here we'll be using capital M, and here we have x is approaching a finite number, so we'll be using delta. So this is the M delta definition. Lastly, the limit as x approaching infinity of some function f of x, and let's say this is equal to infinity. For this one, you see the limit is infinity, so we use capital M, and x is approaching infinity, so we use capital N, yes. All right, and of course, we can also have negative infinity here, here, and here, but you know, that will be for later on. So these are the four main versions that you should know. Today, we'll talk about this one. So let me give you guys the definition, and then we will write the proof and then at the end, I'm going to use the specific epsilon and you'll see how everything works. So here we go. Today, we have the limit as x approaching infinity of some function. And let's say this is equal to a finite limit L. This right here means, here we go. Let's review this again. L is finite. If the limit is finite, then we use epsilon. So for all epsilon greater than zero, there is sixth. This time it's x approaching infinity, so we use capital N. There is some number capital N that's greater than zero. Classically, you know, such that, such that what? This time we just care about x going, you know, all the way to the right. If x is bigger than this capital N, so this means if we are going far, far, far away, you know, toward the right. If x is big enough, then the distance between f of x and the limit is going to be close enough. So the distance, again, that's the absolute value. And then we just do this minus that. So we have f of x minus l. And then this should be close enough. That means it's less than epsilon. In fact, you can be as close as you want for this and that. So notice this part is pretty much the same thing as what we did before with the epsilon delta definition, but it's just that when we have x is approaching infinity, we want x to be greater than some capital N, all right? And one more thing before we do the proof. This is very common when we talk about sequence, because when we have sequence, it only makes sense for us to take the limit as n goes to infinity. n is like the small n here, all right? And then that's the sequence a n. Okay, here we go. If you want to write a proof easily, these are the four words to remember, all right? But before anything, of course, as always, put down PF first. And the four words are given, and then choose, and then suppose, and then check. So whenever we have for all epsilon greater than zero, so we just go ahead and write given epsilon greater than zero and you can also say be arbitrary but that's optional in my opinion this is good enough then whenever it says there exists that means we are going to choose n and what's n we don't know and don't worry about it just 
write it down right here. And this is perhaps the hardest part, all right? But for now, just write it down and just calm down. And then we proceed. Now, we want this to happen, right? So suppose we have x is greater than n. So that's the third part. Suppose x is big enough, right? Bigger than this capital N. Then we want to have this, right? So this is implication. If then assuming we have this, then we want to have this to happen. So let's check if that part is indeed going to happen. And that's absolute value this minus that the function minus the limit so 2x plus 1 over 3x plus 4 minus 2 thirds and hopefully we can work this out and show that this is less than epsilon and then we'll be done so this is usually the blueprint for the definitions like this for the first few things that we do is just algebra, so that's the fun part. Just go ahead and combine the fractions. And I'm just going to multiply this and that. So we have 3 times 3x plus 4. And I will multiply this and that, which is 6x plus 3. And then multiply this and that. So 3x times negative 2, so negative 6x. And then 4 times that, which is negative 8. And I will still keep the absolute value. Notice. 6x minus 6x cancel, and then we have 3 minus 8, which is negative 5. But instead of the absolute value, we can just write it as positive 5, right? And then just take out the absolute value. And then over, the 3 doesn't matter, right? It's positive, so just write it without the absolute value. And now, be careful with this. We have 3x plus 4. Technically, we should put absolute value, right? But here's the thing. If x is greater than n, and here's the thing, if x is approaching infinity, that means x is positive, right? Right here, we can really say greater than zero. Both of them are positive, right? So in fact, this is pretty good because three times x, this is positive, and then we add another positive number, everything's positive, absolute value doesn't matter. So I'll just write it as three x plus four. Sometimes, we may end up with a minus here. Then in that case, you may still have to keep the absolute value for a little bit, or you will just have to put down some more condition right here. Okay, now what do we do after all the algebra? Well, now it's a good idea to use the condition that we have, and that is x is greater than n. Here's the thing. Let's go ahead and replace x with n. So let me just write it down right here. 5 over 3 times 3 capital N and then plus 4. And let's think about it. What's the connection between this and that? x is bigger than n. That means this denominator is bigger than this denominator. Meaning, this whole fraction will be smaller than this whole fraction. And this is the inequality that we would like because we want to show that this is less than epsilon, right? So we are on the, you know, right track. Now, here are two ways that you can proceed. The first way is the more beautiful way, in my opinion, is that you can go ahead and set this 5 over 3 times 3m plus 4, because we really want to make this equal to epsilon, right? And that was epsilon. So let's just go ahead and set it to be epsilon, and then solve for n. That's okay, because remember, n is going to be expression in terms of epsilon and later on you can also see that n is going to be positive because epsilon is positive this is good but let me tell you sometimes when we are doing epsilon delta or epsilon n definition as long as you know how to work with these inequalities then it's actually pretty easy you don't have to go through this way here's the easier way for this check this out so imagine that if we don't have the plus 4 what does that mean? That means this thing, so check this out. I'm just going to write down 5 over 3 times 3n, which is 9n, all right? And I'm supposed to have 3 times 4, um, which is plus 12, but I'm, I'm ignoring that. You see, this denominator is bigger than that. That means what? That means the whole fraction is going to be, again, smaller than this. Of course, the 5 stays. So we can just kind of take away the 4 and then just say this thing is smaller than that. 
perfect. And now what do we do? Well, you can again just go ahead and put 5 over 9 and set it to be epsilon and then figure out what n is. But again, we can play around with this inequality. Check this out. 5 over 9 is less than 1. So I can just write this as less than 1 over capital N. Yes, and then finally, I'm just going to write this down right here. 1 over n, put it to be epsilon. That means n is going to be 1 over epsilon. So, right here, I'm just going to say this is equal to 1 over n is 1 over epsilon. And then right now, we can actually go back here. I'm just going to choose n to be 1 over epsilon. Have a look. Because epsilon is greater than 0, so that means 1 over epsilon has to be greater than 0, so this has to be true. Right? I'm going back and you know, just write down everything. And what's 1 over 1 over epsilon? Of course, this is equal to epsilon. And what that? And that's, that's, that's how I do it. That's it. So if you just want to see how to write a nice proof like this, then you're done. You're done. Seriously. Now, let me take some time to explain this in detail. As I promised, I will give you a specific epsilon and then we'll see how things work. So, suppose I'm going to pick epsilon to be 0 0.02. So what does that mean though? Here, let me give you guys a picture. I'm going to grab this function for you guys. So it will look like this right here. And I'm just going to care about the first quadrant, all right? And when x is equal to 0, we have 1 over 4. So it's like this. And then we have this increasing, but it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at 2 thirds. So this right here is 2 thirds. Epsilon is 0 0.02. And right here, absolute value of the function minus the limit. Again, we want the function to be really, really close to the limit and this time the error or the distance from the limit is 0 0.02 and it's just going down because the function is only down below right so i just have to worry about coming down here and of course this is non to scale 0 0.02 is really small but you know the idea if i have 2 over 3 minus 0 0.02 like this right here all right this is going to be right here again the blue dash line is l and then the red dash line is l minus epsilon as you can see the intercept right here and this is going to be the capital n that we have to find all right so how could we make it happen well when we have actual numbers we can actually just do some algebra and this is not so bad this is the curve that we have over there. So all I have to do is solve the equation 2x plus 1 over 3x plus 4. Oh, by the way, 1, 2, 3, 4. I like this number a lot. But anyway, you put the function equal to this number. Um, just say 2 over 3 minus 0 0.02. All right, and then just go ahead and solve for x. And then you are going to get the answer for this right here x is equal to, I will just tell you guys the answer for this. This right here is 97 over 150, all right? So you can do it whichever way that you want, but x is going to be 238 over nine. And this right here is approximately, so I'll just give you guys approximation, which is about 26.4, all right? And that's how big the end should be. So this is 26.4. Now, if you're working with little n right here, if you're talking about sequences, then you should pick capital N as the whole number. But right here, we're talking about x, and the capital N is just any number. So you can say 26.4 each. And you're pretty much done. Again, this n will work. This is the smallest possible n to make this epsilon um, work, or if this statement work. Now, earlier we found out that we have a formula to compute the n, and that is n equals 1 over epsilon. So what does that mean though? 
If epsilon is equal to 0 0.02, that means our capital M, based on our computation earlier, is just 1 over 0 0.02. And just work that out, we know that's equal to 50. And you see this statement right here says, if x is greater than n, then this should happen. If x is greater than 50, that's somewhere right here. If x is greater than 50, of course, it's greater than 26.4. The curve is going to be in between of this and that. And you might be wondering, is this really legit? Yes, it is. Whenever you're doing the rigorous proof for limits, as long as the inequality works out, then nobody can get mad at you. All right? So that's it. And I also want to talk about earlier, I told you guys that um, we could have Look at this right here, and then set that to be capital, well, set that to be epsilon and figure out what capital N is, right? So let's go ahead and do this in Voodoo real quick. So if we have 5 over, I mean purple, 5 over 3 times 3n plus 4, and then if we put this to be epsilon, let's just solve this. So I'm going to multiply the reciprocal of this, so we get 1 over 3n plus 4 equals 3 epsilon over 5. And then I'm going to take the reciprocal on both sides. So 3 capital N plus 4 equals 5 over 3 epsilon. And then I'm going to bring the 4 to the other side and then divide the 3 on both sides. So capital N will be 5 over divide the 3, I get 9, and then epsilon, and then 4, it will be a minus 4 here, over this 3. So this n, you could have put this right here earlier, and that will work perfectly as well, except for one little thing. Notice, we have a minus 4 over 3, so that means this n might be negative sometimes. So in this case, you could also use Right? You could also use n because I want to avoid this being negative. So what we can do is just go ahead and pick the maximum of 0 or this expression. 5 over 9 epsilon minus 4 over 3. That means if this happens to be negative, just use 0. And that works perfectly. And if you use this formula right here with this epsilon, guess what? Yes, you are going to end up with this for your answer. Check this out. I'm just going to plug in 0 0.02. So n will be equal to 5 over 9 times 0 0.02 and then minus 4 over 3. Work that out, all right? You will really get 238 over 9. Multiply this by 3 and 3 and then work out your fractions. So, that's it. Seriously, if you just kind of calm down and then just try to understand all the, hmm, for all exercises and all that stuff, all the rigorous definition of limits, these kind of proofs are really, really fun.